everybody, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers and I'm really delighted to be here today with Mandy Croshaw who is Managing Director at the Wren Cullen Care Group. Hello Mandy, lovely to see you. Hello there Ruth, hi. So first of all Mandy, tell us a bit about what the Wren Cullen Care Group does. Okay, um, Wren Cullen Care Group was um, started by myself back in 2015. We currently um, in four care homes, three for people living with dementia and um, one for people living with a learning disability and autism. Um, we very much focused on the homely atmosphere, person-centred care. We have a strong belief that people are still people no matter of their disability, their illness, uh, and we treat them that way. So the homes are a fun place to live and a fun place to work. We're just everybody living and working together. That That's our view. Oh, that sounds just absolutely brilliant, Mandy. It's like as an ethos and as an organisation. But I guess do, do people sort of who work for you have different sort of skill sets and their different jobs that people do? Of course, we have um, everybody with different skill sets, different personalities. So we have the domestic team who play an incredibly important role, keeping our environment clean and infection free. Um, oh, we have um, our support workers who look after the residents' personal care needs, um, the social and emotional well-being, which at Ren Cullen we feel is equally as important as the physical needs. We have senior care assistants who administer medication and help. Then we have the team leaders um, who help with a lot more of the paperwork side. So that'd be the care planning, the risk assessments, ordering of medication, equipment. Then we have the deputy manager who assists me because I'm also the registered manager of Belvoir House as well as the managing director. So we keep the business going. We we look after families. We keep up with all the um, amounts of paperwork. As you can imagine, there's quite a lot of red tape and regulation around care. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of an, and everybody has their part to play. It's like a big jigsaw and it all fits in really well. We see um, it's really interesting with the sort of the care assistant role. Is that sort of the common kind of entry point into Ren Cullen Care? I, mean, I, would, I would say so. Yeah, I mean, I started off as a care assistant myself 27 years ago. So, wow. And I, tru I truly believe the best way to, to do this job is to work from that point upwards. I don't think you can manage and care for people if you don't know how to do that yourself. And it gave me a brilliant base to work on my career from there and it's very frustrating for me when people say to me oh I'm just a carer because that probably is that and the domestic team are the most important people that work here because they look after the people that desperately need it every day you don't need qualifications to work at Ren Cullen you just need a wonderful happy personality a kind nature and lots of patience and we can teach you the rest so that wow. that's where we see it Mm. Oh gosh, that is um, that's fascinating, and that sense that actually that a lot of that is about the sort of personality that you have in terms of sort of wanting to care for other people, being positive, being patient with people. Are Absolutely, there other, yeah. Are there other sort of skills as well that are useful, like good communication skills or anything like that? Yes. You know, in that role. Yes, of course. Um, it's really important to be able to communicate with people with dementia to meet them in their reality so basically a person uh -huh. with dementia could very well be living in a different reality maybe in the past they could think they're at school so you have to be able to have the skills to go with that we, we don't correct people we join them in their bubble so it is very much about communicating with people at their level um, also one of the main things I think as well is reliability mm. this is a job where people need looking after 24 hours a day seven days a week and I think if you're coming into care you need to have that level of of commitment to to turn up for your shift and you know make sure that you do all your shifts you're here on time you do the best you can when, when you're here it's really important for us to keep continuity for our residents and once people come into care we like to like them to stay and like give them every support they can to maintain in this role for me it's one of the most rewarding you could do so uh, that that sounds like it and I love that whole idea of sort of meeting people in their reality and that kind mm. of emp the empathy that must go with that in terms of sort Absolutely, of being able to yeah. relate to other people. I mean, as part of our in-house training when we're, we're training new members of staff um, 
we ask them to live in the care home for a day to be a resident for the day so they have a fully immersive experience of wow. what it's like to live in our care home and we also do training um it it's around um virtual it's called virtual dementia training so people have um an experience of what it feels like to have dementia so they wear um, a suit and gloves and earphones to make them hearing impaired and glasses so they can't see properly and then we kind of look after them so it gives them a real experience of, of what it feels like because it's, it's a very physical thing dementia as well as um, a psychological thing there's lots of physical illnesses that sit alongside it. So pain in your feet, pain in your legs, stiffness in your joints. What many people don't realise dementia is an all encompassing illness. So people have to have a good understanding of what that actually feels like before they can really understand and care for people. Mm, and I love that whole aspect of the sort of the immersive training that you do. Mm. Is there other sorts of training that people might go on to do if they're working sort of if, if they're a yes. care assistant? Um, we have um, we have um, our mandatory training, so that includes uh, fire safety, food safety, infection control, safeguarding, um, first aid. Um, and also there are um, qualifications, so official qualifications, so your MVQ level two and three. Level four is for aspiring managers, which is a great one if you're a team leader and you're looking for the next step up. Um, level three, um, you would need to be working on or have if you wanted to become a senior. And then there's the level five leadership and management, which is for wow. um, managers. So if you're a registered manager, such as myself, you have to have that qualification or be completing that qualification when you apply for the post. Um, so there, and, and there's even things like myself, I'm now looking to in the next couple of years do a master's degree in dementia care. Wow. Um, and you can take it all the way up to PhD if you want. So it, it's endless. The possibilities are, are endless. So there's low, you know, to get into management or operations. And the scope, there's so much more to care than it sounds. Well, being a care assistant, while I'm not saying that's that's an amazing job in itself, but if you want yeah. to go up the ladder, there, there's so much more that you can do around the care structure. It seems like there's so much opportunity, actually, to be able mm. to develop your skills further and sort of more widely. And yeah. interesting that perhaps we'll say one of those kind of attributes that might suit people is that like that interest in learning and developing yourself as you go as you yes. go along. Yeah, that's yeah. really. I also didn't mention as well, we have qualified chefs. Um, if someone's looking at going into catering there's real opportunities within care homes um we train you we give you the qualification um you have it's it's quite different to being a chef in a restaurant because you have to cater for different specialist diets such as diabetic puree diets um gluten free and there's a lot of training that goes with that so it's not just about the care or it could be on the maintenance side as well so we have a maintenance team that take care of the building and the environment it's lots of things to running a care home apart from the care. That's so many different aspects and all those sorts of different jobs that you can do under kind of yes, one roof. Yes. That's so that's so interesting. What do you think the best thing about working in care is? Me, um, no day is ever the same. Um, obviously, I'm sitting here at my desk now. I probably spend a quarter of the day at my desk. The rest of the time I'm downstairs. I could be doing anything from playing bowls um, in the garden, in our pub, having a, a drink with the residents. Um, we go on outings, we take them to the shops, we go to the pub. Um, and also, obviously, I have to have my work done. Um, yeah. But it's just fun. Every day is fun and every day is different. It's it's a job where I wake up in the morning and go, oh, I'm going to work today, not like, oh, I have to go to work today. And, and the time goes so quick. I can sit here and before I know it, it's four o'clock oh. and I still do work as a care assistant occasionally just so I can see what's going on and, and yeah. be with my staff. They're 12 hour shifts and it's eight o'clock in the morning. You start before you know it, it's quarter to six in the evening and time just <laughs> goes so, so quickly. And it's really rewarding because the people that live with us, right, we've, I've looked after lawyers, doctors, dentists, really professional university lecturers I'm caring for at the moment one particular man and um, they have so much to tell you they're they're wow. so wise they're so knowledgeable 
and and there's so many things you can learn from from these intelligent people oh that just sounds amazing the variety variety of the days as well sounds really appealing i sort of wonder mandy just to sort of finish is if you were to go back and have a conversation with sort of um younger mandy starting out on her career journey what piece of career advice would you give yourself do you think um I don't think I would. I, I actually fell into care by mistake. So I was um, doing my university degree and I just needed yeah. a weekend job as students do. Um, and thought, oh, there's a care home, went to the job centre as you did. And I thought, oh, I'll give that a try. Um, I was actually doing a um, degree towards um, working with children. Right. And I changed. I was there for about two months and I thought, no, this is definitely what I want to do. So it's just by pure luck that I happened to walk into the job centre and see this little advert for care assistant at the weekend. I thought, great, I need the extra money. (laughs) I just fell in love with it. And that was in 1996. So and I've been in it ever since and just wouldn't want to do anything else. Oh, fantastic. I think that sort of being flexible and trying something because you never know where it will take you is like sort of one of the best things that you can do, isn't it? I just think that's brilliant. And how lovely to hear about how your sort of working life has evolved. And just so, so interesting to hear about all the opportunities that there are in care. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been great to meet you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ruth.